हेलो एंड वेलकम टू भारत शक्ति आई एम नितिन गोखले ऑन मंडे इंडिया टेस्टेड इट्स फर्स्ट इंडिजिनसली डेवलप्ड अग्नि फाइव विथ मल्टीपल री एंट्री रॉकेट्स फॉर द इंडक्शन इन टू द आर्म फोर्सेस गोइंग फॉरवर्ड ऑफकोर्स द फर्स्ट टेस्ट वॉज डन इट वॉज कॉल्ड दिव्यास्त्र द नेम दैट वॉज गिवन एंड आई थिंक इट वॉज अ वेरी सक्सेसफुल टेस्ट एज the prime minister also congratulated the scientists and uh, others who are involved in the development of uh, this particular version of agni 5 and uh, to discuss what it means uh, what it brings to the table and uh, how we should look at agni 5 or the new uh, agni 5 version of divyastra i have with me a distinguished uh, scientist uh, of course a former head of uh, drdo chairman of drdo in fact dr avinash chandar also known as uh, india's missile man in a way of course dr apj abdul kalam was the original one but all of these uh, scientists following in his footsteps have uh, further enhanced india's missile power uh, going forward dr avinash chandra welcome to this program and thank you for joining um, in fact um, you know you've been associated with uh, various stages of agni 5 uh, and um, in the agni series of missiles what is the significance of this uh, test which was carried out on monday successfully this stress for us to carry multiple independently targeted reentry vehicles as we call them irvs so it carried three reentry vehicles and one missile which can be targeted to different uh, targets in the enemy area or it can be targeted to the same target so it gives a lot of operational flexibility to create high damage to create a widespread attack and also ensure the survivability of the multiple warheads in case of counter defense by the enemy it's a major milestone only few countries have this type of capability today i see but uh, this obviously uh, i mean the uh, vanilla agni 5 if i can <laughs> term it that way without the mirv uh, capability obviously is a different version this is a different version this is the first test but you said only few countries have this ability what does it uh, take to uh, sort of get this ability or this capability uh, in the indian system what uh, what kind of development uh, uh, time span it has uh, spent you will know a little bit more about this uh, i think from 2012 onwards when it was first tested agni 5 this is must this must have been in a development stage so uh, what does it involve uh, how do you uh, see this going forward see this uh, multiple mirv system has been in our minds for a long time since 99 onwards we did the first paper designs to make it happen but then multiple programs were going on and if agni 5 was the most critical requirement so we went ahead with that but to convert existing agni 5 to a mirv system it requires lot of changes one is you have to deploy what we call a post boost vehicle on which multiple warheads are integrated so you that vehicle has to be maneuvered it has to be separated from the main missile it has to be independently maneuvered and at different points of flight it has to release different warheads in the right direction with the right velocity and accuracy of the requirement is less than 0.1 meters per second to get to an accuracy of 100 meters at the end and that's a major challenge how to make a, a very smooth separation very exact orientation monitoring and imparting of the requisite velocity and then releasing the warheads so it has been a major challenge and um, the team we congratulate the team on making it happen successfully right in fact uh, you actually put it very uh, simply for our viewers uh, you mentioned uh, that uh, this ability is there only with a few countries so uh, it requires i suppose uh, indigenously developed avionics it requires sensor packages all that and uh, clearly india seems to have mastered 
these uh, requirements uh, for uh, MIRV uh, enabled Agni 5. So, uh, what has been your experience and what do you think Indian scientists have been able to achieve in this sector, the avionics and sensor packages? Without that, this won't be successful, isn't it? Yes, you're right. One part is that Agni has a very, very high indigenous content, almost 80% is the indigenous content in Agni missiles, including the MIRV system also. You see, leaving apart the components which are have to be purchased because India doesn't have its own foundries, they are coming up now. But uh, entire systems, whether it's the navigation and guidance system, the power management system, the batteries, the entire airframe structure, materials, Entire content is now produced in India. Industries have been developed, raw materials like the explosive raw materials and the propellant raw materials, all are being indigenously produced. And there, to get a navigation system, India is now producing its own ring laser gyros, which can give you the kind of accuracy what is needed for long range systems. Drifts of the order of 0 0.005 degrees per hour. That's a world class capability which has been created indigenously now. And those are the sensors which are flying in Agni missiles. Right. So, uh, obviously, uh, scientists have uh, worked very hard at it. But like you mentioned, uh, even Indian industry, I mean, uh, the ecosystem has been developed. Uh, clearly, the uh, integrated missile program has helped that over the years you have uh, so many uh, small players, big players coming in and joining hands together. So, do you think now India has a robust ecosystem to take on any of these challenges as missiles get developed further and further and become more and more complex uh, as this has been demonstrated in Divyastra? I agree with you. I think Indian industry has matured a lot in the last decade. And with the opportunities now coming in the defense, industry is really poised to take on new challenges. If you take Agni, for example, the entire rocket motors can be cast in the industry, like Solar Industries India Limited. They are capable of casting these motors. There are industries, already there are industries which are fabricating these motors casings. There are other industries like which are doing the onboard computers, the navigation systems. There are yet another industry which is doing the structures and the airframes for this. The engines, nozzles, they are being by various industries. So if you see actually the defense labs today are the prime designers of the product and integrators and primarily the software design developing agencies. So almost entire hardware is coming from the industry. I find that Indian industry has matured a lot and is ready to take on major challenges on its own if needed. Oh, great. So, uh, I can see Agni Prime's photograph behind you. Uh, so, uh, since we are talking about Agni family, what is Agni Prime, by the way, because people have been asking these questions, if you can explain that a little bit. I think we spoke about it when it was tested, but still to refresh people's memory, if you can just recap that a little bit. If you see, there are three classes of long range ballistic missiles. There's one called the ballistic, pure ballistic missile, where you go in flight and after a certain time when the power stages are over, the payload goes on a ballistic path under the field of gravity. Then there is a second which is called Ma, maneuvering re-entry vehicle, where the payload enters the atmosphere and it is capable of maneuvering and going pinpoint performance to hit the precise target. And third is the MIRV, multiple independently targeted vehicles. So today what you have seen is MIRV, Agni Prime is an MARV, MAV class of vehicle, where have maneuvering re-entry vehicle, which can have a pinpoint strike, accuracy can go to as low as less than two decades of meters, 10 meters. I see. And uh, see, you've been associated with the missile program for a long time, uh, Dr. Avinash Chandar. 
uh, in 2012 when Agni 5 was first tested, I think uh, you were part of that uh, team heading that in fact missile cluster if I remember correctly. Uh, so, uh, now uh, when India does this, typically uh, Divyastra which has been tested on Monday, how many such uh, validation tests are required uh, for this to become ready for induction or to be used by the user really or uh, the user can uh, be confident enough to use it generally? Typically, there is a series of uh, 6 to 10 trials which are needed or very development proving the reliability by the developing agency followed by user involvement and user training. So, anything between 6 to 10 trials are the typical requirement world over for this class of systems. So, I think Agni MIRP class of systems also have to go through that phase and be ready for deployment because reliability is most critical in this class of systems. Absolutely. Uh, one, uh, you know, uh, particular question that a uh, lot of people have uh, when you, when I travel abroad or uh, some people come to India is that uh, how has the uh, decision or, or uh, the uh, development that India has joined the MTCR club now and doesn't have the restriction, how does that uh, free India of some of the restrictions from the earlier times. I mean, is, does that make a difference or it's just one of those uh, stages in India's uh, missile development program? I think restrictions are still not fully resolved. We are in the process. But I find the restrictions imposed have been actually a boon for the Indian industry because this has forced us to find our own solutions find our, build our own capability in multiple areas. See, when we started the program, hydraulic walls were denied to us, launcher, the, we were denied even the actuators for the launcher, we were denied the raw materials for making the heat shield and uh, re-entry vehicle structure, we were denied all kinds of sensors, but it enabled us to set up our own capability. Today we are producing our own gyros, accelerometers, we are producing our own fiber-based motor casings, we are producing our own hydraulic systems, electromechanical actuation systems, and entire launch mechanism systems. If you name anything, we have come at par with the world capability in terms of subsystems and the systems which go into the missile technology. And I feel MPCR has been given us a big impetus to make it happen. Well, that's great to know. And I, I think clearly uh, India is progressing uh, very rapidly in uh, do, uh, demonstrating and of course inducting uh, powerful and uh, impactful missiles going forward. One final thought from you on uh, where do we head from here? Uh, not just DRDU, but as a country, uh, what are the next stages that India should look for or what are the, uh, you know, missiles or uh, such uh, capable weapons India should be looking at in developing as a, as a scientist who's uh, worked in this field for a long time? I think the future is going to be more and more maneuvering, high-speed maneuvering capability, hypersonic glide missiles, hypersonic cruise missiles, which can cover very long distances and still maneuver so that they can beat the anti-ballistic missile defenses which many other countries have developed fairly well developed capabilities now including India. Oh, that is one area where a lot of work has to be done. When India needs to develop its own HGVs as well as HCMs. In addition, we need to go very high on the supersonic long-range cruise missiles. Today, if you see Brahmos, can give you about 800 kilometers. It's good if launched from a ship or from a certain range. But I think it has a capability to build a much higher range. And we need to work in that domain also. Similarly, even the very low cost on the, this is on one end. Other end, we need to produce much lower cost systems which can go up to 1000 to 1500 kilometers non nuclear purely strategic role but with the conventional warheads where you can have large numbers low cost numbers and i think that's going to be a major future requirement for the because as we see 
the strategic depth of defense is steadily increasing. Earlier, we used to find 50 to 150 kilometers is enough for safeguarding our battlefield capabilities. But today, we find that even 400 kilometers is inadequate. The range of enemy munitions has increased steadily. The movement has become much faster. The deployments can move much faster. So I think there's a need to build tactical missile systems having a range of 1,000 to 2,000 kilometers and at a very cost-effective manner. And I think India has the necessary capability and with the new thrust from the government with the missile ban, import ban, I think this is going to be a challenge which industries should be happy to take on. Well, that's great to know and that's a good note to conclude our conversation. Uh, Dr. Avinash Chandra, thank you very much for these insights. Always a pleasure to talk to you, but we will come back to you whenever such developments occur. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Nitin. It's been good. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Avinash Chandar. Uh, this was uh, the discussion we had on uh, Agni 5 and, uh, of course, the Divyastra, which was tested on Monday. Do keep watching Bharat Shakti and, of course, we'll bring to you such conversations going forward. For the time being, it's goodbye. But do keep subscribing to our YouTube channel, our social media handles. And uh, also, keep sending feedback and comments. They are always welcome. For the time being, it's goodbye.